Hello, Wastelanders! Welcome to episode 7 of the Pipcast 3000, a general Fallout and gaming focused podcast hosted by me, Kato. God damn. Alright. Kill me today. We're gonna get it. We're gonna get. Hold on. Wait. I gotta exercise <laughs> the voice muscle. Hello, Wastelanders! Welcome to episode 7 of the Pipcast, a general Fallout and gaming focused podcast hosted by Kato Genesis. That's me. And Bad Company Sarge. That's me. Today we're talking about topics. <laughs> yeah, so many topics. So much stuff. A lot of Fallout 76 stuff has been happening. There's also, I see you've got some old Fallout 3 kind of stuff going on here, which is quite interesting. Yes. Something about CRTs and old black and white televisions and all that fun stuff. Mm -hmm. There's a little stuff to talk about games that have just come out and are going to come out. So, Borderlands 3, there's going to be a gameplay reveal soon. We've got some Mortal Kombat 11 and the Days Gone thing is been going on, you all will, of course, dear viewers, be able to see everything, because there's a nice little TV uh, computer screen with all the timestamps. Yeah, that's right. So anything you want to skip to, or skip over, or skip past, I don't know why you would, because you love hearing us talk, mm -hmm. but they're all there for you. Yes. I, f I feel like, I, man, I still feel like my voice is kind of rough, but I guess I'll just deal with it. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> okay. Well, you want to, uh, let's see, let's see. I want to do the tip. I want to do the tip of the day. If you had a game sitting around that you bought during a sale, or have been meaning to try and haven't played and stuff like that, uh, why don't you do that? That's the tip of the day. Go play very good tip. one of the games in your collection that you haven't played at all. I'll be talking a bit about that right at the end of the podcast, so you've got that to listen to and look forward to, oh, and cool. other stuff too. Why don't you tell us in the comments what, what game you, you've been looking at or, or thinking about and haven't played yet, and plan on playing because we told you to. <laughs> do it. <laughs> All right, so there is this Reddit user by the name of Retro TV Fallout, um, and you can tell by the name that they did something with a retro TV and Fallout. Um, they played through the main storyline, at least it seems like, of Fallout 3 on a 1972 Zenith black and white CRT, and they have it in, I think they have it, at least the intro uploaded in 4K. Um, and a, a clip of the intro in 720p. It's, I, I think they're a prop maker or something like that, or, or they have a nice collection of props along with it because they have the CRT and they have all these nice Fallout props on the right side of it. Um, okay. But it plays the Fallout 3 intro on the CRT and you get the whole kind of retro effect that you would, um, not just from Fallout 3, but from what it's being played on as well. Um, it's a really cool really cool feeling and, and they do have a link for the whole playthrough as well hoping that they have oh they only have 88 subscribers why don't you guys Ooh, go subscribe to them we can improve that yeah we can guarantee this will get them to 100 go um, over subscribe tell them kato and sarge sent you yep retro tv fallout on youtube and they yeah they did these were long long form episodes too like an hours an hours worth or more yep. but worth worth checking out for sure yeah. So. It's always nice to see people doing something different with playing games. Yeah. Something I definitely encourage. Obviously you don't have to go and find a black and white CRT, although I'm pretty sure I've got like a few in my hallway. So if you need one, hit me up, I can <laughs> hook you up with one. But, you know, it's nice to see people doing something a bit different. Yeah. And that's and that's awesome to, to yeah, see when somebody is doing something like that. And also when they get their, their awesome, you know, karma points. We're yeah, doing yeah. so. Sweet, like sweet car. Yeah. It's PS2 to RF cable, which works with the PS3. Okay, so yeah, they had to do a little bit of finagling with the with the cables to. Yeah, I I know a streamer who doesn't play in black and white or anything, but had been using a CRT to play like old um games where he streamed and he showed at one point during one of his streams this whole setup and it was like, okay, this has to be connected to the computer and I've got the CRT to the side and I've got a webcam connected to something else and I've got the soundboard here which has to connect everything and it was a whole kerfuffle. Mm -hmm. So, not the easiest thing to document, really. Yeah, you want to you talk about the, the all the 76 shenanigans that have been happening in the last couple weeks? Oh, there are so many 76 shenanigans to go on about. There like, are. a ridiculous number. I, I cover this game as, like, my job. And this past, like, week in particular has been crazy. Because I went from having, I think, three or four videos planned to I think I'm releasing, like, seven videos this week because I've just had stuff pile up and suddenly be like, oh, this has been added, oh, this has been added, oh, there's more stuff, oh, there's just <laughs> everything going on at once. Yep. Because we've had... It's... Update 8.5 is the one we've just had, isn't it? Yes. 
Yeah, so update 8.5 has added a ridiculous number of stuff, because the content updates have had extra stuff in them that we didn't know about. Mm -hmm. There's been stuff activated throughout the week as well, which we got no inclination of. And then there's all the stuff we were actually expecting to happen also occurred. Yes. So, do we want to start with controversial stuff, or the more fun and easy stuff? Uh, ending strong is always what I like to do, so... I'd okay. say go with the go with the crap and then go with the and then paint it gold afterwards. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll smother gold everything. <laughs> Although you'll need a lot of gold if you want to buy over repair kits. Ah, hey, wow, hey, oh. that's good. Good job, Sarge. <laughs> so yeah, repair kits have been added to the game. Both standard repair kits and improved repair kits. Improved repair kits you get from killing the scorch beast. Scorch beast queen, not the scorch beast queen. That's a completely different thing. <laughs> You get them from killing the queen, all good. You can use them to repair a weapon up to 150% out in the field, no need for a crafting venture or anything. That is all perfectly fine. Standard repair kits are bought in the Atom Shop for Atoms, which can be earned in game. Mm -hmm. I do want to clarify, make sure everyone knows this isn't a you can only spend real money on them. You can earn the Atom Points in game and buy repair kits, or you could just spend actual money, get some Atom Points, buy repair kits and they repair your weapon up to 100% out in the field, that's what they do. Yep. Yeah. You said how much the improved repair kits repair for too, right? 150%? Yeah, it's 150% for those. So yeah. there are better ones that can only be earned in-game. Right. Which, yeah. And the standard ones cost 60 atom points apiece, which tends to be like two challenges, I'd say. Because I feel like I average out about 30 atoms from most of the challenges I do. Mm -hmm. So it's... It's the kind of thing where, if you're playing somewhat regularly, on a day where you play the game, I reckon you'll probably get about 60 atoms just by doing challenges. Yeah. So it's kind of a thing of, a repair kit a day could be bought with just the stuff you do in game naturally. Yeah. But, I'm... Obviously both of us have been quite negative towards this more than anything. Yep. Because it, it's not the worst thing in the world. But there's a lot worse ways there could be, like, pay-to-win elements oh, implemented. Yeah. But it's just kind of a bad sign and got a bit of a bad taste to it all. Because yeah. it had just been a case of we've been told, explicitly told, like, there's tweets and everything about it from... Oh, who was it from? Pete Hines? Pete Hines, that's it. Yeah. yeah he tweeted that uh, it would only be cosmetic microtransactions... And it was like, yep, fair enough, 100% behind that, that's all good. And now it's like, oh, well, there's also a utility item you can buy from this, which doesn't change the game all that much, but it's a case of, oh, you said we were going to have just cosmetics, and now we're not having just cosmetics. Are you going to change more of this? Yeah. Is it going to keep going down this path? Yeah. Because if it does, that's going to be bad. Yep. Okay, so yeah, yeah. Uh, we've run this topic into the ground. <laughs> like, it's it's been we've we've like mega voiced our opinions on it. Um, uh, like, I don't think this is like the worst the worst possible path for the game to go down um, if it wants to like ruin itself. Um, <laughs> at least that's how I see it. Like, there's so many different ways they could have implemented it to where it wasn't like kind of an invasive type thing. Like, yeah. instead made it, you complete the, the weekly challenges or daily challenges, and you get you just get repair kits. You don't get atom points. Like, you could just do it that way, and then also have it in the atom shop if the people wanted more. Like, if you did it that way, then it wouldn't be that big of a deal. But okay. because it is, the, the repair kits themselves are a monetizable thing, like, outright, and the upgraded versions are extremely rare, like, they... they are incentivizing it, I think, the wrong way. Yeah. Um, and also, I wanted to mention that their um, <laughs> their PR jargon at the bottom of the 8.5 patch notes. Um, I'm gonna read it out loud. I'm read it out loud because this is just nonsense. Um, a note on utility items in the Atom Shop, because everybody was really pissed when when it first when it first happened. Um, they say first. Thank you to everyone in the Fallout 76 community who took the time to share their feedback and concerns about adding utility item like repair kits to the Atomic Shop. Over the past couple weeks, we've examined all the feedback, all the feedback, 
<laughs> and today we want to share our thinking when it comes to these types of items and how they relate to the Atomic Shop. When we originally announced the Atomic Shop last year, we said that we would that we will not provide anything that offers a competitive advantage. We remain committed to that statement and take it into account when we evaluate every new item that we bring to the shop, both now and in the future. While repair kits do offer a way to fix an item in the field, we feel you will find that they are a convenient option that you can utilize during your adventures. Wow. How did they... If we find that repair kits do offer any sort of competitive advantage once they are available, we will make any changes necessary to ensure that the advantage is removed. Aside from purchasing atoms, you can also unlock basic repair kits using atoms you've earned from challenges. Additionally, the more powerful improved repair kits will not be available in the shop and can be earned by completing in-game content like killing the Scorch Beast Queen, so they might add it, they might be included in something else. Regardless of how, how they paint it, or they're trying to paint it positively, uh, it makes it clear that the only feedback they were paying attention to was the PvP side. Yeah. That that they that they want to like bring to light anyway. Um, where the rest of us are just like, no, stop monetizing. <laughs> like Yeah. Anyway, that's that's uh that's that. <laughs> yeah. If there's anything oh, I don't else. like the I don't like the fact they call it the competitive advantage when if you're playing in adventure mode, it's not really a competitive game. But you're no. still paying to get an advantage, yeah. so yeah. They're not. They're not. They're choosing not to see it <laughs> the way we're seeing it. Okay, so there's that. What about the uh, the Pioneer Scouts backpacks? That sounds cool. That sounds like a neat thing. Yeah, that's some good stuff coming into the game in the future. We saw. I think only by the time this comes out, it'll only be like three or four days ago. We saw like some concept art for the backpacks they added in an inside the vault, which was pretty cool. Yeah, got and to take a look at. There's 20 of them. Stuff. That's although to be clear, not all of those are in the game. Yeah, they did point out this is just like the concept art. Here's some ideas we had, etc., etc. It's not to say they couldn't end up in the game. I mean, especially with the atom shop and stuff. Yeah, I'd be surprised if they bung some backpacks in there. I really like the, the direction they're going with them, though. Like, the options that you're going to have for customizing your backpacks and stuff like that. Yep. Not just the obvious carry weight, but also um, refrigeration units on your back. Yeah. As well as um, armor plating and stuff like that. Yep. Yeah, so it's like you can have a little less carry weight than what it would potentially give you, but gain, like, some special benefit otherwise, which is really, really cool. Something I'm looking forward to. Heck yeah. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for that. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people are excited for backpacks, which sounds like a really, really dull phrase. Like, hey, I am so excited to get a backpack. But this is cool. In a game like nice. these, though, it's it's like yeah. you collect a bunch of stuff. Like, that's a big part of it. So yep. having a means to uh, both represent that you carry a lot of stuff and also have more capacity for carrying said stuff. I think it's yeah. pretty great. Um, and it has, it's going to have a quest attached to it as well. Um, the Pioneer Scouts. Yeah. Something, something, mm. Ever Upwards. It's probably going to be Ever yeah, Upwards. Yeah, the Ever Upwards update. Which, from the sounds of it, might be a slightly bigger multi-quest one, as opposed to some of the smaller ones we've had recently. Yeah. Which I'm quite looking forward to. Also so initiated being... by a poster. Initiated. <laughs> Oh yeah, uh, just man, there's going to be so many posters in like five years time with this game. Yeah. Like, I won't be able to build enough walls to put all the posters on. I wonder I wonder if uh, at some point the Atom Shop will have like a um, like an automated like poster rolling like marquee thing. Oh yeah, that just kind of goes <laughs> around and around. <laughs> to be really cool. Yeah, I mean they might have to implement that at some point. Yeah. Might be necessary. I'm, I'm running out of wall space, man. Yeah, I've got to rebuild my camp at some point. It's needs a whole new redesign. But anyway, that's off the point. Pioneer Scouts all looks good. Yes. But before that happens, we've had a whole bunch of updates. Many of which I know, Kado, you haven't been able to experience all of them. I've experienced a couple of them. Yeah. The burrows I'm... and the actual sheep squatch. Am I allowed to gloat a tiny bit about the whole actual sheep squatch thing? Go for it. I'm. I've had a look on YouTube. I've been scouring around. And as far as I can find, I was the first person on YouTube to put a video up on it. Nice. And I'm like, yeah. Congrats. Yep. 
it was then left with kind of a bad taste afterwards when like it was four hours later and I was like, oh, all the other people have more views. Oh. Yay. <laughs> but, oh. but, I mean, it's channels like Gopher and Juice Head and Rifle Gaming, I think, so I kind of expect it, but it, it was still a nice feeling to at least get the first one. Like, I think I was an hour ahead of Gopher who did a live stream looking for it. Nice. So, yeah, I'm quite good about that. But anyway, yeah, there's... So, for people who have been playing the game, there was a fake Sheep Squatch, which was added in, like, the main kind of Sheep Squatch themed update. And then on... What day was it? Was it Thursday? Yeah, it would have been yesterday, so... Yesterday from time of recording. So, on Thursday, there was really just a stealth drop of actual real Sheep Squatches added to the game. Yeah. And I had a couple of people in my Discord server tell me it was a clan dox and tato just went hey sarge we just did an event and killed a sheep squatch here's the event they gave me all the details and were like hey you should, should know about this and i was like wow that's so cool and as far as i can tell they were like among the first people to actually encounter it because when they sent it i didn't see anything on reddit didn't see anything on twitter didn't see anything anywhere that's awesome so, yeah i was just like i jumped into the game and chatted to them a bit, we were both like, yep, we're going to server hop. I found it, did it, like, boom, got to kill a sheep squatch. And since then I've been hunting them down, and slaughtering them, and turning their quills into throwing weapons, because I didn't tell you about that, Kado. You can take what? their quills out of them, and they're throwing weapons that poison enemies. I was poisoning the Scorch Beast Queen earlier, it's so cool, there is so much good stuff here. What? But, so, there's an event called Free Range, which is kind of the most reliable way to find a sheep squatch because at the end of it one of them will yes. burrow out of the ground I which is that. also pretty cool yep. and when you complete that event you learn some plans the sheep squatch also drops like stuff like uh, its horns, its skull etc etc and you can learn plans such as like a way to cook its meat that's a bit better than normal, you can learn a plan for the shepherd's crook thing you get, you can learn a plan for a big club which you make out of its horns and you can learn a plan for its quills. So it seems like each element of a sheep squatch has its own unique thing that can be made from it, which is pretty damn cool. That's awesome. It really is just great. Like, this is one of the best updates to the game, I think. And Bethesda didn't say anything about it until, I think it was like, probably at least 10 hours until after it had been up. I think it was until there was a tweet with them going, Oh, apparently there's some creature wandering around Fallout 76. That's all we said. It was like, yes, Bethesda, this is how you should do it. Just stealth add in some stuff that's really cool and gets us all excited, rather than building up hype like the Burrows. Yeah. Yeah, which was... How did you find it, Kato? The Burrows was a basic dungeon with a quest. Yep. Um, yeah. I, I, think, I think when people hear dungeon, they think raid. In, in the sense of, of Fallout 76. At least that's that's what that's what my line of thinking was when I first heard it. They were like, first yeah. first major dungeon release, and, and it's not it's it's just a big underground area with yeah. generic enemies. Like it's it's not a yep. huge thing. And then and then of course the quest that goes along with it does have a unique quote unquote legendary thing, but yeah. It's it's like it's okay. <laughs> it's not yeah. it's not incredible. But that's really that's really about it. It's just this really big area that still doesn't feel like you even get a little bit of a little bit of lore in there, but it doesn't Yeah. It, it just feels that's like another thing, the, dungeon. The lore itself is a basic raider story as well where mm -hmm. people were like, "Oh, let's car away because everywhere's terrible." And then the raiders went, "Haha, we're in charge. Let's kill you if you're bad." And people went, "Oh no, raiders. Well, I guess we'll have to try and survive up top or oh, we're going to die or yada yada yada." Everyone's probably dead. Yep. It doesn't really matter. The whole thing was very underwhelming. Although I made a little like mini cinematic which I put into one of my videos, which is literally just like no HUD shots of the burrows with the burrows background music. And that little cinematic I made, I think I enjoyed watching that back more than I did playing the burrows <laughs> itself. Like, the place is pretty damn stylistic. Yeah. There's an actual throne room down there with like a death claw skull mounted and burning braziers going on. And the music is utterly beautiful. It mm -hmm. is a really nice piece. But they added in just for that dungeon. Yeah. And it's nowhere else in the game. And it's one of the best bits of Fallout music I've ever heard. I'm like, yes, that is good. And 
the actual stuff that was there to do was just a bit like, eh, didn't live up to what it could have been. Yeah, it felt, uh, if I remember correctly, because cause I, I went on my vacation technically after the Burroughs came out, okay. so like I have all that fresh in my mind instead. So, yeah, Mark Morgan was the one that made the like atmospheric like tracks for Fallout 1 and 2, and they definitely had a more um, bleak, foreboding type feel oh, yeah. than, than the, the kind of hopeful feeling we get from Inon Surge stuff. I, I, was getting, I was getting a lot more Mark Morgan vibes from the, the, the Burroughs music. Yeah. It definitely um, is more of that creepy yeah. tone to it. So, so like that was noticeable for me too, because um, because the rest of it, it was like really nice to look at, really well made area, but there wasn't enough going on in it. Yeah. Um. I, I think I'd almost have preferred it without the quest and lore. Like that's one place in the game where I'd be like, yeah, you don't need to tell me stuff. Just leave a few environmental hints. Let it be really creepy. Have yeah. lots of ghouls going around. But instead it was like, ha ha ha, we're all living down here and we've got a society here. And yeah, I can tell that from the fact there's beds everywhere and a doctor's hut and so on. And oh, there are raiders. Yeah, there's raiders everywhere. Yeah, and a whole you know fishery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wonder, wonder how many people mutated from those fish. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, that part was really pretty neat. I, I like I like the music and the, and the look. But uh, yeah. the rest was mediocre. <laughs> yeah. I mean... Because there's been so much stuff that's happened, we can talk about another mediocre thing as well. Cicado, do, do you like taking photos in Fallout 76? I do. I love using the photo mode. Yeah, the photo mode is great. Do you want to use a worse version of it? That's nope. an item in your inventory. No, nope. but Kato, no. but, but Kato, it's no. an update. Come on, Kato. You can't make me. <laughs> use the camera, Kato. <laughs> is this how we promote content? Yes. <laughs> you want to I mean, try this thing? No. <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, I don't know why the camera is an update, and it, it feels weird having it as, like, this thing like, hey, you can take photos in... Uh, you could already take photos in the game now. Hey, you can hold on to something whilst taking photos in the game now. It, it should it's... not... One of the things, like, it should not have ammo or film. Yeah. It's That's... actually quite expensive to craft as yeah. well. Yeah. That, and that's that's one of the reasons. Like, it, it should not yeah. have that along with it. Like, just take pictures, man. Like, because yeah. photo mode is free. You don't. Yep. It doesn't cost you anything. You don't have to build something to take a nope. photo of your third person image. Like, <laughs> that's the thing. For anyone who doesn't know, <clears throat> Fallout 76 has like a really good photo mode. Actually, it's one of the best I've seen in any game I've played. And yet they've added in, in a very recent update, a physical camera, which you can find from like a random dead person who will spawn somewhere. That's a whole other thing, I'll get into that in a minute. You can find this actual camera, go for a quest, repair it, etc. And then you can just take photos as if you were almost looking down a scope. And once you complete the quest, you can get a zoom on that camera. No filters, no uh, selfies or angled shots or anything like that, you just point and click, which you could do by hitting print screen if you're on PC. It's uh kinda kinda basic. I was really hopeful for it. I, I was I was like excited that I could just equip something and take a shot really quick. Yeah. And, and I mean do it, it is slightly faster than photo mode. And it's a little easier to get like really quick shots. I've used it a few times on the sheep squatch emerging, but even then it's like it's not instantaneous. If it was a one button thing where I hit like zero on my keyboard, actually no, that's a hotkey. If I hit like K, I don't think K does anything. If I hit like K on the keyboard, as in K for camera, as we all know, <laughs> and if I did that and then it just took a photo as if I was looking for a camera, then great, that'd be really good for speedy. But instead you have to equip it, which generally means if you want to take a quick photo, it needs to be on a hotkey. You then need to aim it and then need to pull the trigger. That's going to take you a couple of seconds at least, even if you've got it all down to muscle memory. So it doesn't even work properly for getting like that split second nature shot you might need to get. Yeah. Plus, I did. I made a little video about it, and I did a side-by-side -side comparison of like some of the best photos I took with the natural camera and with the photo mode, 
and it, uh, there's so much more you can do with photo mode. There is someday, Wonderful. someday. Like if that, if that just, how about this? If if equipping the camera would just take you to photo mode, and that was an option, that would be mm. fine. Or like just having a, having a, a regular hotkey for your photo mode. Like either one, really. Yeah. I Instead mean, of having to press M and T. And yeah, then, I mean, and then the that is the thing though. To get up. into photo mode, you do just have to press two buttons. Yeah. To get to the camera, you have to press three, no, two buttons, and then take it with one again. So yeah, it's exactly the same. Yeah. I, I watched I watched your your video on it too that, that had the comparison of like pictures taken in either yeah. mode. <laughs> Professional yeah. wasteland photographer over here. Oh yeah, I, I've got some really good photos. I'm quite proud of them. Although I think the best one so far is one I've got of you with like the postcard frame and you're using binoculars and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> that is like a really cool photo. Because it I, makes Kato look like he's just searching the wastes. I'm exploring. It's real old timing. Yeah. Doing it's, that it's thing a, that I like to do. It's a sweet photo. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Do we have any other 76 stuff? Like... I kind of want us to now because ending on the camera is a bit sad. We've just it ended it with two things. There's, there's definitely been more, hasn't there? The the There's well the sheep squatch so uh, encrypted event as is still fun. Oh yeah, that that still occurs. Have have we talked about encrypted before? Not we alluded to it, but we didn't really talk about it too much because we didn't want to spoil too much. But um, okay, everyone, it's spoilers time. Now that now the actual sheep squatch is out, like we can talk about it more. I think. Oh yeah. So at the end of the whole lying low quest line you got the opportunity to trigger an event which was broadcast server-wide called Encrypted. This event summoned a robotic Sheep Squatch called the Legendary Imposter Sheep Squatch. And it's quite a f cool fight, and the Sheep Squatch in that is so damn strong. Yep. It's crazy. Like, it will one-shot you. Yeah, well. I I haven't seen someone survive a close range direct melee attack from it. I I mean I have, but <gasps> Kato is a god, we must all worship it's, him. No, it's, it's like half my health though. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'm not trying to sound like a BA, but <laughs> like I even if I block it's only it's a third of my health, so like Yeah. It, it'll still mess mess your day up and, and it's yeah. it's face laser doesn't have a cooldown and that's cool. That's, yep. that's I see a lot of people as well wonderful. who run up to it, get hit, and I don't go into downstate, they're just insta-dead. Mm -hmm. It's it's crazy. Plus you have to activate pylons which damage you to make it turn visible and vulnerable, otherwise it's invisible all the time. Yeah, I leave that to the gunners. Yep. And then there's a bunch <laughs> of robots that spawn in as well, so you've not just got to worry about that. You've got to worry about like Colonel Gutsies and stuff, which I think we might have even talked about like in episode 1 or 2, them being like stupidly powerful they're overpowered like they yeah nobody's really addressed them but like they themselves are overpowered i'm i am still under the impression that they do a percentage of damage instead of a number quite possibly i because mean because it doesn't matter what your armor is they just cut through it yeah it's it's pretty damn crazy plus yep. there's eye bombs yes as well with spawning <laughs> and just blow up everywhere those kill me so, yeah <laughs> Yeah, well, you're melee. You, do not you don't melee. Have a chance against do me. not hit the baseball-shaped robot. <laughs> yeah. I I will say overall though, it is really cool having a very difficult event. Yeah. Because like the past couple of days, I've killed the queen like twice, and it's been easy. Like even with not many people showing up, it's pretty simple to do. Mm -hmm. Like I can shoot at her, and it's the kind of thing where like okay, on my own, I could probably deal like at least a quarter of the damage without too much stress. Like, in the time limit, I could get that much down. Uh, that's possible. So it's like, oh, okay, so technically I'd only need four people that can do as much damage. And it's like, yeah, the Queen's guaranteed dead pretty much. It's So having a enemy that's really, really strong and is an actual threat, whereas the Queen does, like, barely any damage. Yeah. There's, like, the end boss. She's literally just really tanky. Like, the, the more you have to worry about is, uh, uh, well, for me anyway, is the radiation damage that she has with yeah. her aura and what she drops on everybody and and the ads like all the additional scorched monsters that show up oh yeah i was playing earlier and we had so many additional things like it was crazier points i i couldn't 
hit the queen because there was like a legendary mile at queen away <laughs> and the whole king mega sloth and there were other mile there were rad roaches there were rats there were standard scorch there was attack dogs coming in there were mutants and robots charging in from the north because they'd got drawn over by all the commotion it was utter chaos that was pretty cool it's fun though <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Just get a real big explosion. I had no explosives. I was having to use my sheep scotch quills. I want throw to them those. into the enemy. Uh, I'll have to give you some. I I can make them. So I'll make you some at some like point. Like just make them? Like you, oh, you need the quills them. though, right? Yeah, I need the quills, but Okay. Cuz I have those. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> I would like to use them. <laughs> they are so fun. They're not very powerful, but they're fun. Also, want to talk a tiny bit about survival mode. Okay. Because there's weekly challenges in survival mode where you can learn, earn, sorry, legendary weapons from it. Mm -hmm. And I decided to do that. Turns out it was a very smart move. People on my channel actually loved it. I was People like, sweet. It. Cool. Yeah. I was, I was wondering about that, actually. I was surprised. I was as well, but it was like a really quick bit of content for me to do. Like, three or four hours had it all done. It's been like my most viewed vi video in a few weeks. Wow. I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah. Nice. But, so you can complete these challenges, earn a guaranteed legendary freestyle weapon, pretty cool. The most recent one from this past week, which might not be active, still might be active now actually, I think there might be a couple of days from when you're listening, is the Action Hero. This huge 50 cal with two shot, fast to fire rate, fast to reload, so satisfying to use. Mm -hmm. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to try and get that. Obviously I had to go on to survival mode, which I haven't been on since the start, where it was just griefers and death and endless misery. <laughs> And yeah, not great stuff. All the servers I jumped on whilst getting this weapon, highest number of kills anyone had was three kills. Wow. Yeah, it was so different from day one. Like, people weren't just hunting each other down ruthlessly. People were actually playing the game, and from the looks of it, I saw people in like groups who didn't appear to be fighting, and then I think I saw maybe twice the actual notification come up saying, someone has killed someone else. Where obviously someone had decided, oh no, I don't trust you, and shot the other person. And that is actually pretty cool. That is and cool. makes me want to play a bit more survival mode. Yeah. Once I've got rid of all my caps. Once once people have relaxed a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's like, it's nice to see that, because I don't know about you, but I was really worried it was just going to be grief as paradise. Yeah. I mean, it probably still is somewhat. Like, if there's, if there's new yeah. content that comes out um, mm. every so often, I'm sure that other people yeah. Um, but the one I was looking forward to, and I I had already posted this one, was the Unstoppable yep. Monster for the June 4th through 10th challenge. Um, and none of these are PvP challenges to get it, by the way. Uh, but this is a Deathclaw Gauntlet that um, does more damage the lower your health is, so bloodied. It does 40% more power attack damage, and you take 40% less damage while power attacking. So... Yeah. Yeah. It's... You definitely want it if... I mean, if you plan to do any sort of melee or unarmed combat at all. Yeah, that's the thing. There's some pretty nice stuff in here. A few of the legendaries are like, eh, but some of them are really kind of beast. Yeah. That's that's kind of what's getting me to actually go on survival mode and give it a try. Yeah. Which is good, because it means devs at Bethesda have actually <laughs> implemented something which incentivizes people like myself to try survival mode. That you don't need atoms for. Yes. <laughs> it's like the, the, this was purely gameplay. There's no atom thing here. To oh, be man. fair, I suppose there's a cynical way to look at it where the gun challenge uses up one of the weekly challenges, so potentially there's one less way to earn atoms. Yeah. But that's, I'm, I'm okay mean, with that. Yeah. I'd much rather get a legendary weapon than 40 atoms. Let us, let us earn actual things through gameplay yep. instead of... Um, just giving us a whole bunch of atom points to incentivize us to spend money. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> um, like that, that will come naturally over time. If you see something really cool that's cosmetic, and they're they're working towards that too, because like some of the new stuff that's come out, it's been really cool looking. Um, yeah. Just, uh, I I think they they should have just left it separate. Like, can I can I go on a little tangent? Go for it. Okay, let me let me bring it up really quick. Monster Hunter World, something I've been playing pretty regularly the last few weeks it has cosmetics okay you can buy gestures <laughs> oh yeah you can buy gestures for two bucks but hmm. uh it's only it's not in the game at least i don't see it in the game at all um they don't have a shop or anything like that they just have it in 
um, in the Steam launcher. Like, here's some extra, you know, two dollar DLC for a, for a pose that you can Perfect. get, and that's that's where they leave it. Like, they don't they don't push it, but even so, they still add more and more content over time. That's substantial. Like, you don't have to do anything extra to get it. It's just more free content. And guess what? We paid sixty dollars for it. <laughs> yeah. Like there's this there's this weird like separation that Bethesda has from everything else that's successful in the gaming area. And Capcom right now is nailing it, whereas Bethesda they're experimenting a little too hard without looking into what's successful. I really hope they start paying more attention, <laughs> is all I'm saying. Cause yeah. The 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 adding adding things like repair kits. I don't know, I'm circling back to that topic, is not a good idea. I mean, we've seen for a while how to make the whole microtransaction system work, and it really is just to have a really large player base who enjoys playing the game, who are going to want more and more stuff out of the game, who will then just go, oh yeah, this looks cool, I'm going to get this, I'm happy to spend a bit of money because mm -hmm. I'm playing this all the time. Yeah. Like, I mean, uh, I'd say since Fortnite, it's been that way. Since Fortnite, um... Battle Royale, I should specify, because yep. I know you like Save the World. Yep. <laughs> Since that, it's been a case of, oh yeah, doing just cosmetic things for yeah. a game that's got enough dedicated players makes a ton of money. Yeah, and those those have even changed and adapted, like, based on the the changing of, like, player interest, too. Um, yeah. and, and like, I know people, <laughs> listeners in general don't like hearing, you know, oh, Fortnite did something good. Well, <laughs> there's a reason it's popular. <laughs> yeah. Um, Fortnite Save the World, they had their, their loot llamas, which was their, essentially their loot boxes where you would get blueprints for items that you could build on your characters and then level them up as you play. These would all like require things in game still to, to build and also to level up. So you could get the plans to make them through the loot llamas, but you would still have to, you know, level them up to have them be usable. Um, Warframe does something similar. But what they did with their loot llamas is they made them x-ray llamas now, which shows you exactly what you're going to get when you open oh, okay. it. okay. So you're spending V-Bucks, but you're, you know what you're buying. So you can, you can look at the available ones and be like, oh, I don't want to buy that, and just wait until the next ones come out, which is probably yeah. like 24 hours from then. And like they're they're paying so much close attention <laughs> to like player interest and and what the ecosystem is like. Whereas Bethesda is just uh, God, <laughs> it's upsetting how stubborn they are. That's yeah. that's all I'm saying. I don't know. I'm done. Rant over. Okay. okay. <laughs> I've I've been in a salty mood the last week or so. I don't know. I don't know what the deal is, man. You went um, on holiday, you're supposed to be happy-go-lucky now. I, it, was, it was a really nice holiday, and it was also, um, I, I have, I've been having a ton of fun playing Monster Hunter, so there's there's those. Anyway, moving on. Yeah, we should probably stop talking about Fallout 76 now. Or I, I mean, we were talking about Fortnite just then, so I guess we've already stopped talking about Fallout 76. <laughs> Let's talk about Fortnite the rest of the thing. <laughs> oh yeah, everyone, oh, everyone's gone. Everyone leaves. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, Borderlands 3. Yeah. <laughs> Borderlands 3, let's talk about it. So there's a gameplay reveal coming up on May 1st. That's all we know. That, that like There's yeah. there's links down below of, of all the stuff we talk about, but like, um, that's just a Twitter link of them being like, one week away, ha, with the gameplay reveal, and it's gonna, yep. it's gonna happen. Like... So, pay attention May 1st, that's when, that's when we get some gameplay of Borderlands 3. So, I'm ready. I've already pre-ordered. Me too. And now because I've pre-ordered, which, up until like, year or two ago, I never did. I always bought games, like, a long time after they were out. Now I've got this horrible dread of, what if the gameplay reveal is utterly terrible? Which, it won't be. It's gonna be pre-recorded. It's not like they're live-streaming some random bloke off the street doing yeah. it. It's, I actually double-checked that set up well. <laughs> when I wrote yeah. it down, because I said, live-stream gameplay, and I was like, no, 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 wait, 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 read that again. <laughs> <laughs> read it again. It says... <laughs> It says gameplay reveal, okay. That's the thing, and hopefully it will be good, but I mean, but I think they'd struggle to make it look particularly bad. Yeah. It's like, it's gonna be Borderlands. They just need to show lots of different guns, maybe a special ability, some different enemies, and bullets with some cool music. Yeah, which, is, which That's, is what they do. Yep. <laughs> Easiest thing in the world. Oh, I'm also gonna go off a tangent on that. Okay. And say Rage 2 has continued with some good trailers. 
Ooh. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They, they had a they what is rage really two? Well on that front. Yep. Yeah. It was like, hey, do I need to know the story of Rage One? Not really. Asteroid, world's ended. Shoot stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a Here's beautiful your game. Context. context. Yep. It knows what it's doing. It's just yeah. like, yeah, you're gonna shoot things. Just have fun. Stop thinking so much. Pull the trigger. Blow things up. Look at the pretty explosions. Yeah, I'll add that too, to the thing. Yeah, it's... Oh yeah. Oh, if I just add in so many random topics, you'll have to find all the links. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that hard. Google works just fine. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> if it's a popular topic, which is what we cover in news, I hope. Oh, I mean, we could go really specific if we wanted to get some really obscure. Yeah. Kato, take over before I... Take over? Okay. I don't know anything about Mortal Kombat, but we're going to talk about it for a second anyway. So I guess Mortal Kombat had a rocky start because of its microtransactions, even though it's uh, otherwise uh, apparently a really good fighting game with an actual cohesive story that people like to like to follow what? when you say cohesive story for fighting game standards it's a cohesive story yes <laughs> it's it's still a bit weird yes like fighting games never have normal stories this one has like time travel and people meeting younger versions of themselves and really weird stuff in it which is explained away by of course should i say like a story that fans are okay with or that love should I, yeah. Should I say that? Okay. The fans of the series are more okay with than the previous games. <laughs> the previous, like, four. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, of course, the... the I, I enjoy watching the fatality reveals because they're always goofy and gratuitous and all that good yeah. stuff. I don't remember the specific details about the microtransaction system. Let me... It's a case of you can earn, like, currency, but it's a huge grind, apparently, and mm. just, like, kind of ridiculous... So it's kind of a case of, oh, just buy it, because you're never going to be earn it, be able to earn it through the grind. And if you want to unlock the stuff, like all of the, the specific, like, consumables, spelt with a K, that you can use in combat, also spelt with a K, that give you, like, certain buffs. <laughs> like, there's one that restores, like, 50% of health or something. You think they did that for SEO purposes? I mean, it's been since, like, the original Mortal Kombat. Well, okay, so if people spelled it out, like, the normal way, though... Like, they wouldn't yeah. be able to find it. I, no. I I think there was somebody thinking in that sense. See, in my mind, it's more of the K sound, or the letter K looks more metal than the letter C. Could be that, too. That's my entire theory behind it. <laughs> Our microtransactions are metal. Been. Yeah. <laughs> Just have a death metal playing. Hardcore. Scorpion tears with like a K. skull and eats their brains. <laughs> yeah. But, um, as for the whole grinding thing, apparently the developers have said... We know this is not right, we're going to improve it. Don't know when that's going to happen, obviously, but it's the internet, so there's already been lots of people angry online saying this is the worst thing in the world, and complaining and saying stuff like, oh, it's pay to win, it's a repair kit, what are you doing, etc, etc. But yeah, it's hopefully something that's going to be looked into properly and fixed. It, it just kind of sucks hearing about this, and hearing about it above all else when the game launches. Because I wasn't even aware the game was out until I heard Mortal Kombat 11 has these terrible microtransaction problems. I, I heard about the same, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 sometimes we don't like what journalism is doing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or or what, uh, I don't know, what, what the main topics are uh, circling a game's release. Um, yeah. Or, or a game's hype. And it's it's been it's been like that, like, pretty much this whole year, I think. Is oh, yeah, what that's... there were there are so many other conditions added to oh my goodness I'm going into a rant again. <laughs> <laughs> there there are other conditions added to the game, um, mm -hmm. and and things that are surrounding the game become more important than the actual game itself. Um, yeah. And we've seen it with the Outer Worlds, with uh, Borderlands Three, with um, I don't know Seventy Six is a weird outlier. <laughs> I mean, the 76 still fits into a bigger sphere of just, like, a lot of the focus on the negatives regardless. Yeah. Like, be it inside or outside of a game. In 76 it was both, which was twice <laughs> as bad. But there is very much, especially when games launch, like, for big coverage, I was going to say the last game I can remember launching with, like, overwhelming praise as opposed to lots of criticism was Red Dead 2 but yeah. then when the online launch for that 
it was all criticism. Yep. That I heard. So Apex Legends, that, with its with its sneaky release, got positive feedback. Yeah, Apex did do pretty decent actually. Because I think I think the main issue here is, and they and um, what what's what's the developer's name? Um, Respawn. Respawn. That Respawn figured out is that we hype ourselves into a corner, I guess. Like oh yeah. Into into thinking it's going to be the worst thing ever, um, and then our our expectations are. Uh, like weirdly high, but also skewed. <laughs> yep. I don't know how to how to ex- how to describe it because it's a case of being a video game fan is always better before the game comes out because before it comes out, you've got this perfect thing upcoming. It's going to be everything you want. It's going to be the single player RPG battle royale that you've been hoping for since the day you were born, and there's going to be nothing wrong with it. Yeah. And then it drops, and it's a video game like all the others. And there's problems. Not yep. everything you like about it. Overall, you'd probably enjoy the game, but you've built up your expectations so high that it can only feel disappointing at that point. So why are you going to play a game that makes you feel slightly hollow inside because you wanted more from it? Yeah, and you know, now that you say it that way, um, <laughs> I also think back on the games that I played without any prior knowledge or prior um, hype or interest about, and I played them and they were fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's but that's also, like, they were naturally good games on top yeah. of... You know, because because I've been I played Spider Man, Marvel Spider Man on on the PS4, and that was fantastic. But I didn't have any prior like stock put into in, into like wanting to play it. I was just like, yeah. I hear this is really good, and I love Insomniac games, so I have that preconceived notion that that it's going to be you know kind of uh, platformy, fly around craziness. <laughs> And and then that's all I had, so I you know tried it and it was fun. Yeah. Um, and God of War, like I, I I didn't really invest at all in the God of War games on the in the PS2 era because it wasn't really my uh, my jam. But yep. um, I play this one, the the PS4 version, and it's fantastic again. <laughs> but again, those were also two games that were um, generally well received on launch. So. I can uh, give an example of that. Uh, Skyshine's Bedlam is a game I knew literally nothing else about before playing it, That's and I game. really enjoyed it. It's it's a good game. I, I wouldn't say it's a great game. It's good. Nothing amazing, but I really enjoyed my time with it. Yeah. Because I didn't have any coverage of it whatsoever, so I just went into this going, oh, it's a video game. Let's play it and see what it's like. And I was like, I enjoy this. Yeah. And Perfectly I think that happy. was... That was one of the live streams I did where the developers actually stopped by and commented on it or something like that too, which was That's pretty great. Cool. Yeah, it was actually the first game I live streamed on my channel. Oh, really? Was happy about? Yeah. What? Yeah, it was like, oh, I need to test out live streaming. I don't want something that's going to be too taxing. So this little like, is it an RTS? Would you I call it an know that. RTS? Or... Trivia. What's the name of it? Sarge Trivia. Anyway. Yeah, but I went through and because originally I was going to do all of my live streams, I wanted things where I could name people in the chat. So I went through on all of the characters in Sky Shines Bedlam and renamed them as people in the chat. Yes. I and it was so. entertaining watching some of them who I was like, oh no, I've got to keep you alive. And they just get turned to dust and I was like, oh, sorry. And I <laughs> talked to whoever's in the chat. You're dead now. Please leave. That's, a, that's, what, made the, uh, that's what made the XCOM uh, live stream so much fun. Yeah, it, it's a really nice thing to do. Anyone out there who live streams, try and find games that you can get some proper audience interaction with. Yeah. It, it makes the experience a lot better. Find your regulars, and then and then when you address your soldiers by name, I'm sure that their ears perk up when they're when they're in chat oh, too. Yeah, yeah. It, it's pretty cool. Like I've actually had it while I've been watching people's streams. I watched someone called a uh, Crazy Eyed Eddie, who streams on various platforms, and I think he was playing Pixark which is like the pixel version of Ark Survival Evolved. Mm. And he named like a phoenix or something Sarge after me. And all of his creatures died in like this huge horrible raid thing, except Sarge. Sarge survived. (laughs) And I was like, yes! It felt so good. That's awesome. We've really gone off topic here, haven't we? Yeah, we have. I like it. (laughs) It's good. It's good. So we had uh, Days Gone got mixed reviews. Yep. That's that's the last that's the last news topic. Wow, I didn't I didn't ramp that up at all. Like that's no, that was that was pure flat delivery. Ah, uh, all right. You could have said something about well, something that might else be reborn from the ashes, like a phoenix, could be days gone. So far, it's had fairly mixed reviews, but is it scheduled for something better down the line? 
I, I say like, I like tangents. That one better. I like that better. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm quite proud of my tangents. <laughs> Good job. And, what, are they called tangents? No, I, I don't even know. Anyway, yeah. Days Gone, the... It is open world, isn't it? Yeah, open world yep. zombie game has had, like, really mixed reviews. And for once, when we say mixed reviews, it's, like, proper mixed reviews. It's not, like, just 5 out of 10s or just people on either side of a spectrum just fighting for the particular camp. It's legitimately been some people going, I love this game, it's everything I wanted from it. Others going, oh, it's terrible, there's tons of stupid stuff in it I can't stand. And plenty of others going, well, I like this part, but this part really sucked. And it's honestly a bit weird to see the reviews being quite so mixed. I don't know, have you been reading through reviews at all? I've been reading through a little bit. Like, I have the uh, I have the meta the Metacritic thing up. Yeah. Because um, cause I, I don't... I don't know what the best measure is for for, for reviews anymore because people like review bombing stuff too. So like yeah. Um, so I'm looking at this. The user score says 7.5 and the meta score says 72. So that in itself says a little above average for a game. Like it's it's not really. Yeah. I don't think it's a. I don't think but... it's a. a, a game that's going to just pass everybody by but it is above average doing everything um i did watch watch uh, happy console gamer i did i saw his review um and he said that it it, it didn't really uh incorporate anything that's brand new except maybe the zombie horde thing um yeah which is which is really more just like an Im a greatly improved like left for dead type thing but beyond that like all the all the mechanics and stuff that were included in the game were all just done well or um the way they're supposed to be and that's pretty much it like they played it very safe he said it's a very safe game <laughs> yeah um which is okay like i'm okay with an experience that's safe as long as it tells a good story right um well that's the other thing i'd heard where right. apparently the story isn't all that great either which... yeah I, I saw I saw some people that were like they they liked the story or were okay with the story but then like I I think it was IGN that was just like yeah the story's not that great um so like I'm still probably gonna buy it like because I have I have my PS4 and it's a PS4 exclusive that's another thing PS4 exclusive yeah. watch out it's a scary word <laughs> yeah I mean so many people argue about it all the time don't they, they do. I mean yep. the amount of times we see comments going oh you're playing PS4 exclusive games that's terrible ruining the industry so it's so it's so backwards <laughs> yeah I won't ever get to play this game is the long and short of it you just gotta come over it doesn't come out on PC <laughs> yeah <laughs> I mean sure it would technically be cheaper for me to buy a PS4 and the game but you know <laughs> Just hop over the pond, Sarge, it's fine. It's okay. I, I can probably swim. <laughs> but okay, so so we'll look at we'll look at the negative reviews. Um uh, just, to, just I'm looking at the top ones, of course. A user says this is the worst game I've ever had the misfortune to buy and play. I'm so lucky I could return it and get my money back. It's full of bugs, glitches, terrible animations, generic setting and gameplay. Stay far away from this game, it's a waste of money. Oh, it's all it also takes place in Oregon, which is the state I live in, so yeah. that's cool. I, I cool. have a little bit of mild interest because of that fact, and I might recognize some landmarks. Um, I do want to say, with that review, that could have been about any game ever. Could have been, yes. <laughs> that's the thing. I I don't like user reviews. Yeah, they are so often so bad, and there's stuff I see it also in like comments. I'm sure you get it occasionally where if you play a game, someone will almost always at some point leave kind of like a review of the game for some reason. It's. Do you get that? More of a review like, of how I present things, but. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I've seen reviews of games in my videos as well. I don't know why. I assumed this was a common thing. Maybe it's not. People comment about like their favorite games and stuff like that, but. Okay. They don't go into too much detail. They say like one no. one good thing about why they liked it or one bad thing about why they disliked it. Okay. Yeah. It's I'll not... see stuff kind of like that, but it's always really, really generic. Yeah. Like we can say, oh, this game's got a great story, or oh, I didn't like the gameplay in this, or oh, the music was good. That's all very generic stuff, though. Yeah. It's it's almost always nothing specific you'll get to hear out of user reviews. Like if someone went. Oh, the motorbike mechanic doesn't function properly and fit into the world because it feels like it gives you the rewards too easily. Something like that, I'd pay attention to. 
when someone says, I didn't like travelling around the world, yeah. that would be useless. <laughs> and I'm also going to rant as well, because we're both ranting this Do episode. It. So it's a ranty cast today. Yeah, the scores. So you said it was like basically a 7 out of 10 it had been given overall the game. 7.5 from users and a meta score oh, of 72 okay, slightly above. There's an old joke with like the whole video game reviews of 7 out of 10, it's okay. <laughs> because it's yeah. a case of it's okay sounds like it should be about 5. Because that's like middle. Yep. But it's always higher. Yep. Previously I believe there was more of a skew to it being people wanted to get sent press copies so there was more of an incentive to give higher reviews. But I think as that became more and more apparent, a lot of people were reviewing things harsher. And as games, it almost feel like, feels like they're having to be churned out a little bit more. There's more problems coming, so people are more likely to give very negative reviews as opposed to slightly negative reviews. But that also means when there's a game out that they really like or something, like, you know, Red Dead Redemption 2, it's 10 out of 10s across the board. Yeah. Because they're like, I really like this. It is perfect in it every the way. It's the best game. Yeah. <laughs> So, it's become much more of a case of, before, it was just kind of bad because things were always a little skewed and you probably shouldn't pay attention to the score, to now it being, oh, it's completely worthless as a stat, and even reviews are often not worth reading. Like, there'll be good ones in there and honest ones in there, but the amount of times it's utter garbage is terrible. Yep. I, I do want to mention, though, that I think... I think the U.S. school grading system also had an effect on how we see scores, I, I want to say, because I think below a 74 is a fail. Okay. <laughs> or, or, I haven't been in school in a long time. Uh, below 70, yeah. let's, say, let's just say below 70 um, is like D or F. So, um, like 50%, like you did... You did half of what's expected, kind of thing. Like that, I think that association might be there because that's that's kind of what I think when I see numbers um, yeah. between you know one to a hundred. So yeah. that might have something to do with it. Okay. Maybe us just programming ourselves to not think below sixty percent. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure it's different in the UK. I want to say because. I've been to school more recently than you, but I still can't remember it very well. <laughs> but I feel like I've hit, like, 60-something percents and still got a pass, just not a great pass on certain things. Or it might be 60. So I don't remember. It might be. Still, it, it's something that could well be the case. Yeah. Tell us I mean, what your school system messed up with, with you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I could rant about schools as well for ages. Can we make a separate podcast where I just rant for like two hours straight about school education systems? Oh man, just in the UK. Um, and then episode two, we talk about America. And that one. I mean, we had the Common Core stuff to worry about too, which is stupid. Oh man. Yeah. Don't get me started on maths. I could, <laughs> I could go off on one. I almost did a maths degree. I I oh. really used to love it. I was like a proper nerd at times. You should see my <laughs> grades and stuff. Well, you know, uh, I, I was telling Kite. It was in the the recent highlights I did for my patrons. Uh, Kite was in the background doing her homework while Nelsar and I were playing Monster Hunter. And yeah. I was like, Kite can let's play her homework because she was just swearing up a storm trying to <laughs> <laughs> trying to do her college math. And this this is just uh, her requirement to get into accounting because she loves spreadsheet yeah. stuff. Um, okay. And that's basically what accounting is. So, But this is what she has to do in preparation for that. Um, and I just thought it was hilarious that that could be a thing. Uh, Kite Let's Play's homework. <laughs> oh, I'd watch that. Although, to be fair, before I decided I wanted to be a YouTuber, I was considering being an actuary. A, a what now? Actuary. Ah, here we go. This makes so much sense. A person who compiles and analyzes statistics and uses them to calculate insurance risks and premiums. That sounds like a blast. It sounds like a My life job. is going to be so fun. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine why I decided to go the creative route? <laughs> no, for anyone who wants a fun way of that, it's similar to what, what you call it, the main character does in Fight Club, other than fight clubbing. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So really, just real exciting stuff. Oh, I, I, I was going to love it. <laughs> Crunching it numbers, great. pushing papers. <laughs> yep. That's what we do. So much fun. <laughs> okay. Well, I, th I guess we're done with the news segment. That was like an hour, dude. Yep. 
we, we got some maths education got some tangents in there. <laughs> thank you to everyone who's still listening yeah despite us going off topic quite a bit thanks I do for appreciate it dealing with us yeah. <laughs> okay <clears throat> fallout topic speedy content versus longer and detailed content i don't know what your what your whole plan was for this topic sarge so why don't you explain i have a two-pronged attack on this one. Oh boy so the first one is from the actual like game side of having like very small quick updates like kind of a camera versus longer more detailed ones like the lying low quest line and then the second prong is us as content creators when we make like a quick speedy video just something to get out nice and quickly just relatively low effort just about getting it out there nice and fast and form done versus really long detailed stuff like an expan pardon me an expansive guide something that takes maybe multiple days to edit and several days to write a script or something that's a much bigger project which one do you want to tackle first <laughs> well um i guess we could start with the lower effort stuff because i i don't really do like super low effort like quick videos Mm. Uh, I just kind of skip over those if if that's if that's a thing. I like having the um, the long shelf life stuff more so. Yeah. So I guess I guess lowest effort for me would be live streams and let's plays. That would be because um, because those are really easy to put together. Like while I was riding the train from mm. my place to my sister's and back, I was able to edit these episodes together with very minimal issue um, yeah. on my laptop and w with the with the touchpad like it was oh oh it's <laughs> challenging it's like it's like hard mode with with editing like doing that was was not was not difficult editing those is not difficult for me and live streams yeah. of course like once they're done they're done like yeah. the, the the most struggle i have with those is is getting the the SEO to freaking stick and save <laughs> when I'm trying to live stream that day. I got to keep reminding myself to set it up the day before because it, for whatever reason, the title doesn't save properly when you're trying to live stream. Oh, it was fun. Yeah, and and the thumbnail too. Like they're they're both they both act dumb. Yeah. Well, for me, I've got a lot of different speedy content I do because I've also got the Let's Play stuff, which I'm my editing style is often speed editing as well. Like, I edit really, really fast when I get properly into it, and I like to do things incredibly quickly. And you've just sent me, like, pictures of your editing thing, and <laughs> oh, there's so much stuff in there. <laughs> Cicado's got, like... Okay, Cicado's plays here it looks fairly simple, but he's got, like, four or five channels of overlays and stuff. And I'd estimate... How many is that one? Like, 50 cuts, maybe? Why don't I? Why don't I put it? I'll probably put it as a preview on because I have these saved. When people ask, like, yeah. <laughs> what's what's the difference between your workloads, like, and if you compare a guide to a let's play, like, it's it's night and day. I mean, just your let's play. If that was my let's play, there would be four channels: game video, game audio, my commentary, maybe an overlay or two here and there, and there'd be like. 10, 20 cuts tops. Yeah, with the Fallout 1 uh, yeah. ones, I've actually gotten a lot more simplified. Um, yeah. But, yeah, that's that's around the same time as when I was making those, so... Yeah, that's the thing. I can make that stuff incredibly quickly. Then I also have very short, like, almost... I have some of my guides which are very quick and easy to make. Like, I've mentioned the Sheep Squatch one earlier. That was real fast, because it needed to be fast. Me yeah. making a video on that, I had to be basically first to get the video, or else I wouldn't have got any attention for it, because yep. all of the bigger channels would have already done it. And I do a lot of very quick stuff. Like, yesterday I think I made like four videos from like start to finish, which I'm guessing isn't like something you'd be able to do if I said, Hey Kato, can you make four different guides for me? As of like one in one day, or? Yep, one day. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no <Something>. thanks. <laughs> um, if if I had the extra motivation to do so, uh, but honestly, honestly, 
Um, I would probably be more into it if this was my full-time thing. Like, I want it to be. Yes. But, like, it's not right now. Like, I have three days oh, yeah. that I work. Um, yep. And the, the fourth day after that, I'm a zombie because <laughs> I, I just did three hour three 12 hour shifts so yeah um, and then that, that that Tuesday which is my my Friday um, that afternoon is when I live stream so I sound kind of like a zombie for the first you know 20 30 minutes of the stream anyway so part of the reason I quit my job is because I couldn't continue doing it with YouTube it was way too much because mm. I tried basically to do YouTube as a full-time job and also have my part-time job on the side and it did not work. It was hell. Yeah. So now being able to do YouTube as a full-time job means that I can occasionally just relax and have an evening off or wake up late or something like that. It's not a big deal. But sometimes I'll still need to have the days where I do make four videos and work just like for 16 hours straight. Yeah. And it's like, boom, tons of stuff done. <laughs> and it feels good. It feels good to get it done. Oh, yeah. You. And that's something else I want to say about the speedy content is I... A lot of the times I can find it more rewarding than the longer content, at least in the short term. Because yeah. when I get like a Let's Play video done, that's like, sweet, that was a couple of hours out of my day, that's all just rendering now, perfect, nothing to worry about, I'll just upload that. It's a nice feeling of satisfaction. Whereas if I wanted to make a character build, the fastest I've ever done that is one day I got a character build made, and I worked myself non-stop for like 12 13 hours mm -hmm. to get that sorted from start to finish and it was hell and i didn't enjoy it yeah but the nice quick stuff it's like yeah i'm satisfied with that even if it doesn't do great in terms of analytics it's like well that was only a couple of hours out of my day it's not a yeah. big deal the the working working extra hard to be one of the first to do something though like there there is competition in youtube but you're not against other people specifically you're you're against whoever's fastest basically um yeah and and like there's no there's no animosity on top of well unless you're like a really negative guy but like there's yeah. no animosity on top of that because you're just like oh they got it to first um oh, yeah. there's the uh, uh i remember two specific videos that i did where i had to crank them out so fast when fallout 4 was around um mm -hmm. which was the automatron uniques and the um wasteland workshop like what was it? It was it was like an overview. It was like making an arena or something like that. Because um, yeah. Wasteland Workshop was a lot of fun too. As soon as that content dropped, I remember specifically like playing through it as much as I could, getting all the footage I could, and then cranking out, um, cranking out the video within like s like six to ten hours or something like that. Like it was, it was nuts. <laughs> and and for for making a guide that is accurate in that oh, period yeah. of time is so difficult. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, like there was some stuff in Automatron specifically that, that I was like, oh, I don't, I don't even know if this is actually unique or, or not. <laughs> like, um, but then I, but then later, um, you know, the people that tried to correct me and stuff like that later were trying to add things that were just a part of the DLC. And people do that a lot. Like yeah. things that just happen to be a part of the DLC and they consider it unique because it's just part of that. Because that's one of those gray areas where whatever you think is unique kind of thing. Um, and I used to take it like super personally <laughs> when I was <laughs> early on because I was like, God, they not even know what unique means. And like, <laughs> because, <laughs> because it's a different definition for a lot of different people. Um, oh, yeah. And for me, it's just one of a kind. There's only one of it. But then Fallout yeah. 4 threw that out the window, so I had to like kind of cater yeah. to that definition as well. So, yeah. Um, yeah. But but those two specific videos were just uh, I hated myself afterwards. <laughs> like there was no <laughs> there was no nice feeling after except except the residual like large chunk of views that got that it got afterwards. Yeah. Because what about of, right was... now, though? How do those videos feel now that it's been a while since? Oh, kind of thing. I, I watched them back and they look great. I must admit, I, I've seen them, obviously, and yeah. I can't tell they're rushed, which is yeah. <laughs> pretty much the best praise I could probably give to it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it looks like your other content. It's just a well-made guide, all the uniques, perfect. Uh, yeah, up until you told me just then, wouldn't have assumed it. I'm pretty sure I actually watched the Automaton one as probably the most recent one of your old guides. Yeah. 
So let me actually yeah. look at those and see what see how they're actually doing. Because that's the thing too is is whenever you cover. Yep. <laughs> this is I don't know if I like us doing these kinds of topics because they don't really <laughs> apply to everyone. Um, no. But if if you do happen to cover like a game or something like that don't spend too much extra time on the dlc stuff because not everybody is going to play that and even if they do it's going to be for a short time um unless you're doing like a let's play or something like that but if you're doing like guide type content or, or factual stuff like it's not going to get nearly as much interest as the base game yeah uh let's see um automatron units We'll say something else that's cool is always being able to Google or search on YouTube your own video relatively easily. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's a good sign. I like that feeling like, I, too. Yeah, I typed in Fallout 76 Sheep Squatch, video was like second down or something. Nice. That's, yeah. That's, that's what every YouTuber wants. Like, I've even seen, I think the biggest person I've seen properly post about it is uh, John from Many a True Nerd on like one of his Total War series I think yeah. he just typed it in the search bar and it was like all his stuff and he was just like yeah yeah and this is a this is a weird one too. well Automatron was a smaller DLC too um, mm. but here's here's one of the weird ones is the Automatron guide um, has 97,958 views and the uh, Unique Gear for Nuka World has uh, 158,000 views <laughs> wow so Obviously, Nuka World was very much more played because it was more of a uh, open area DLC or new new yeah, area. Yeah, I'd DLC. say it's harder to get all of the uniques in Nuka World as well. Automatron was largely just go through, complete all the quests. As long as you're not sprinting through full speed, you mm -hmm. get the vast majority pretty easily. And now, now it's just weirdly um, or weird because. Uh, now that 76 has come out, like it's going to be confusing, like which uh, which gear is actually unique. Because like the Tesla rifle is unique in Automatron, whereas in 76 yep. you can just get it. And now there's oh, going to yeah. be a a legendary one coming in the in the survival <laughs> event. So yeah, <laughs> like and those weapons as well. Like they're not uniques, but they're sort of ultra rare weapons. So that's a whole other thing in and of itself. Sorry, yeah, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't have a have really much to, to contribute yeah. after that. <laughs> I didn't have a follow on sentence either. I wasn't prepared for it. <laughs> yeah, editing. Okay, so, so with that kind of out the way, that was a bit of a weird topic, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah I, I think both agree. next next pipcast, I I do want to focus on more of a community yeah topic more so than than the. <laughs> content yeah. stuff to be honest that went further down than i um than i was expecting so, <laughs> i i would say those of us those of you listening up to this point uh thank you for having that kind of patience and also what kind of fallout related topic or lore discussion or something related to fallout would you like us to talk about um i'm going to be paying very close attention to uh, what is commented on this one, um, if uh, if some of you have made it this far and feel like contributing, um, and also suggestions for guests, that's yes, that's always fun. I like having guests. Well, that's that's pretty much it for that topic thing. Yeah, have you been playing basically any new games? If you did, what are they like? With Mortal Kombat 11 and Days Gone, do you share like the general community? It seems who are a little bit uneasy about things, or have you been enjoying them? Yes. Let us know. It's quite interesting to see, and especially, I, I personally want to know how people are enjoying Fallout 76 with the new updates, because I've, on comments recently, I've seen a lot of people saying, this is great, it's got me back into the game, and a lot of others going, well, I'm not going to play the game and there's not, like, NPCs in by Christmas time, or <laughs> if they don't radically change this one thing next week, <laughs> and it's like, oh, okay, so the updates have done nothing for them. No NPCs, it's, it's a bad weird. game. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Mild pet peeve of mine as well is when they say no NPCs and I look around at all the NPCs in the game. Yeah. But they're not human NPCs not human with characters NPCs. and stories. But, but like, and there's those too. They're just dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a weird, annoying terminology. They're thing. impaled on those rusty pikes over there. 
Yeah. Good old <laughs> Steve, the dead bulk dweller who I found in a toilet. Yeah, there's, yeah, I was going to talk about that one too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, we've got a favourite NPC already. Favourite yep. human NPC. Yeah, because they have caps on him every single time. <laughs> oh yeah, man, he's such a good source of money. <laughs> yeah, so what have you been playing, Sarge? If it's not obvious, I've been playing a lot of Fallout 76. I have really got back into it recently. So, this weekend is a double XP weekend as well. Oh, that's so right. I've been, yeah, I've been leveling up quite a bit. I'm trying to catch up with you on level, but I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah. Well, well, <laughs> lucky for you, I, I've slowed down on playing it, so, you know, you yeah. have a good head start. It's fine. I'll just stay awake for the next 48 hours, <laughs> you queens, constantly. But it is, it's really nice. I get, like, almost 1,500 XP for killing the queen. It's, it's, a, it's a nice little chunk from that, who normally doesn't give tons. It is pretty damn cool. Plus, with all the updates, I've had tons of stuff to be getting on with, which has been nice. Yeah. That does mean I've not had a ton of time for other games, but I've been playing a lot of games I can squeeze in in small doses. So the one I've probably played most extens extensively has still been Magic the Gathering Arena, which, as of the date of recording, just had the War of the Spark added yep. to it. Yeah. Which means new cards, and yeah, is quite excited. I'm gonna talk about that too. <laughs> oh... <laughs> Oh, did you play with actual War of the Spark cards? Got the booster box. Oh, man. See, I, I've i been getting... I just play online, because there's, like, nobody around me, physical space, in the meat space, who plays Magic the Gathering, really. So I play all of my stuff online. Mm -hmm. And I got, like, a few boosters through, like, a promotional code and stuff that they sent out to everyone on their email list. And I think I've got, like, three or four Planeswalkers from it. Nice. And it's like, wow, there's some really nice cards here, but they've changed the Planeswalker mechanics, they've done a bunch of different stuff with this update, and brought back some old stuff from like six or seven issues ago or whatever, and it's like, wow, this is, this is kind of cool. But at the same time, the thing with Magic the Gathering Arena is you can kind of pay to win, because you can pay for more boosters and stuff like you would with the physical game, yep. or you can earn them by playing matches. I earn all my stuff by playing matches because I cannot afford to start sinking money into Magic the Gathering again. But I was running up against people with like full decks made out of like the really good mythic rare War of the Spark cards and I was like, okay, so you've just dropped like a hundred quid day one to get this ultra deck which people don't yet know how to counter. And I'm like, grrr. Yep. But at the same time it's quite exciting because it's new content for that as well as new content for 76, so I've got tons of new stuff. Plus, I've heard Apex Legends is getting new stuff in the not-too-distant future. I don't know when that is, but I've been playing that game as well, and enjoying it a bit, and still been getting better as well. I've been get getting better at not raging and engaging, and just kind of having fun with it, rather than stressing out about it being, oh, Battle Royale, if I die, I'm down. No. I'll have like both my teammates quit on me and disconnect at the start of the game and I'll still be like, eh, I'll just play for a bit, see how it goes. And I've had matches like that where I've ended up in like the top three and got multiple kills. Because I've just kind of been like, eh, why not give it a go? And I've been able to outplay people who, for some reason, just weren't expecting one person to charge at them with a sniper rifle. <laughs> and it's like, oh, I won. How did that happen? This is crazy, but I'm enjoying it. I saw and you pop into Destiny 2 for a little bit too. Yeah, I've I've occasionally been jumping into that. Oh, I've realised another game I need to talk about. Oh. The reason I've been jumping into that on PC is because I want a really satisfying feeling shooter that doesn't require PvP. Dying Light? But I've... no. What? No. Uh, what? Is that even available on PC? Yes. I thought that was a PS4 one. Oh, well, no, I haven't played it. What? I, d I didn't even know it was available. What? Why are you watching me? <laughs> it's like one of the best zombie games ever. Man, I, I don't need to worry about zombies. It's not something I'm too fussed about generally. Well, you shoot like, people too. Oh, that's more fun. But no, <laughs> no, it's like that's not a game that's really captured my interest at all. Oh man, it, it wasn't when it when it first came out for me either. But once I played it, oh my god, it's okay. <laughs> better with with co-op, like way better with co-op. Oh, well, see, that puts me off immediately. Oh. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I don't play a lot of co-op games. Like, there's maybe three or four games I've ever played co-op. Also, whilst you're searching that as well, a couple of games I've been playing very slightly has been FTL and Final Fantasy VII and IX. I've just been squeezing those in, because 
the kind of like old and casual and they're games I can play whilst watching YouTube and movies and stuff which I do enjoy doing sometimes rather than having to be fully invested. Oh, I've just been sent Kato's Casualty, 17, Dying Light Highlights. <laughs> you can watch it later. <laughs> yeah, I'll watch it later. Um, okay, so uh, was that pretty much all you've been That's more playing? than enough. What okay. have you been playing, Kato? I got a sizable list. Okay, yep. so the Fallout 1 playthrough has started. So Ooh. I've been playing some Fallout 1, obviously. And I started with my Stabber variant build i guess i nickname him the puncher because he's he's instead of melee weapons he's unarmed um yep. and i have been mainly focusing on punching my enemies in the groin because that is a thing you can do in the first two fallout games you can aim for the eyes and the groin as well as the rest of the body so yeah that's hilarious uh was it johnny cage does the groin punch johnny cage does the yeah groin punch yeah okay yeah so i can johnny cage anything <laughs> <laughs> Even robots. I don't know. <laughs> yep. Makes um, sense. So that's that's been a blast. People have been really receiving it well. Um, this is the first Let's Play in years that I've decided to have one episode out per week instead of two. So that leaves more room for me to work on other things like guides, yeah. like the long form stuff we were just talking about in the yep. final topic. Um, so I've also been playing some Magic the Gathering for real. Because I alluded to it, but um, I went to go spend time with my sister and brother-in-law and nephews and their friends um, during uh, the last weekend, and uh, it was a blast. We had we had a really really good time um, having kebabs and turkey and deviled eggs and cake and man, it was just so much food. But um, one of the things I did before I went over there is I started making a a red white dwarf deck um, for Magic the Gathering. But I'm not going to talk about it too much because, you know, not not many Magic the Gathering nerds around. Anyway, um, I was going to say, let us know in the comments if you play Magic the Gathering. Yeah, and what, what colors you play. Yeah. And if you play Commander or Popper or Standard or Casual, I'm a filthy casual, so <gasps> I am. Same. <laughs> um, so also, uh, while we were out, um, we, we kind of walk, walk down the, the strip because we had to mail Cody something. Um, we're shipping him his monitors because he moved out not too long ago. But we shipped him his monitors um, to Seattle. So we walked back from the post office and the card shop is, is on the walk back and also the pawn shop and, uh, and like the bread shop. There's like a lot of shops on our way back. So we wanted shops. to make it like yep. a, just like an outing. So um, yeah, we stopped by the, uh, the card shop and then the pawn shop not far from that. Um, and I got a copy of Ratchet and Clank PS4 for ten bucks, and it works fine. Um, they had like a seven day, seven day return policy, but it works great, so it's mine. And um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's it's a weird it, it's a weird because um, I saw the movie that came out along with it, but it's a weird how they how they wrote it in to the lore, like how they rebooted it was this is Captain Quark re-summarizing what happened. And you're playing through that. Okay, yeah. Yeah, and it's it's really crazy and meta how they how Insomniac did it. Um, and I kind of like it. I like it more than the movie, obviously, but it had, of course, <laughs> you know, cutscenes that the movie was based on. Um, yeah. And during that little outing at my sister's place, I played Frisbee in real life. That was fun. But Kato, that's exercise. It's a fun game. <laughs> 10 out of 10. <laughs> Quick reminders to everyone: Do go outside, have physical activities, be yeah. healthy. Everyone, I'm reminding. Life. I'm good. trying to teach myself to do that. Yeah. <laughs> it's very important. I'm having to lose weight so after the age of lots thirty. Lots of walks, lots of runs. Um, yeah. And then, of course, I was streaming Ratchet and Clank Future: Tools of Destruction on Tuesday, and also uh, what I've been playing the most out of everything is Monster Hunter World with Nelsar because I love yeah. that game and he loves that game and we are able to take down cool, awesome monsters together, um, and it's awesome. And it's the spring event right now. If you play Monster Hunter World at all, or have, all of the previous events are available right now. So uh, right now I'm doing the Code Red event, which gives you the Dante armor from Devil May Cry. <laughs> <laughs> and guess what? Ah, it's free content. <laughs> You just have to kill monsters a whole bunch. 
it's, we've asked you like four questions in the past 20 minutes, but like, yeah. tell us what stuff, things you're doing. Leave your essays below, please. Yes. We'll Write a mark book. them out of percentages. <laughs> that won't actually matter, because don't trust the scores. Yeah. If you want references to anything we talked about during the news segment, all those links are in the description and all that good stuff. And if you want to check out my stuff while well, you're on my channel already, um, there's guides for Fallout and guides for Skyrim and guides for Wasteland 2 if you're really going into the obscure stuff. Prey, um, Let's Play stuff for Fallout 1 and 4 and 3 and New Vegas, obviously. Um, doing all kinds of fun stuff. What about you, Sarge? Well, you can head to my channel, Bad Company Sarge, and find tons of Fallout 76 content, because that's mostly what I'm covering right now. However, I also have started out Fallout 4 Roguelike, a weird permadeath challenge run thing with several different unique characters with their own personalities who aren't Nate or Nora. We're ignoring the whole main quest, oh, I've got to save my son, yeah, 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 stuff, <laughs> and instead going on badass adventures like the awesome wasteland as we are, because that's what Fallout should be. Yeah, this is a real Fallout game what I'm making. Get your angry messages down below saying, yeah, so I'm making a real Fallout game by <laughs> changing things. Go watch the series. It's, uh, it's, it's a bit of a passion project of mine. I've got some really cool stuff. So actually, yesterday an episode went up. So Kato obviously hasn't hasn't seen it yet. But I've got a really cool like character selection screen at the beginning, which you should watch it for that alone. Uh, you should link beautiful. that in here for me too, so I can put it in yeah. the thing. Uh, I'll pop it in just after. Okay. Anyway, as well as that one thing which I've overhyped so much you won't enjoy it anymore, I have also made previous content on Fallout 4 and Skyrim and a few other games you might have heard of or might not of. So go take a look at my channel. Best thing to do is click on the playlist section, see what catches your eye. Yeah. Okay. Woo. Well, with that, we are out of here. I hope you all have a wonderful next couple weeks. Uh, I'm sure we're going to have all kinds of crazy nonsense to talk about or rant about in episode eight remember these are bi-weekly every sunday so please come back and interact with us and stuff like that but until then you take care and be safe bye